Welcome to this week's TESPN Podcast, and Sam Gorey and I are thrilled to be joined by senior soccer player Dakota Bimbris. And Dakota, I've got to ask you right off the top, the perfect hat trick. Um, you scored a right foot a goal, a left foot a goal, and a header goal against Veritas. And I mean, there's not a lot of players that can do that. And can you just talk about how much pride you take in being a two-footed player and also someone who's strong in the air with your head? Yes, um, I definitely take a lot of pride in it. I've come a long way since U10, a little FC Richmond player, but being a senior and being able to lead this team is very exciting and to lead by example is something I pride myself on. So I just wanted to, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing is like, Describe your header goal, because that one, if for you know, if people didn't see it, was like a really cool, memorable goal. So, what 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 did you remember from that goal? Well, something that made it special was my fellow captain Ali Placide threw. She can throw from like sideline to middle of the box. So she threw the ball, and I made a run. It bounced, and then as it was coming up, I headed it into the goal, and. That was very exciting, especially because we were working on throw-ins that week too, and getting her to assist me on this hat trick was very special. That's awesome. So, uh, you've been a part for of a Titan soccer team for a long time. So, yeah, I just want to ask, what does being a part of this team really mean to you? You've been here for a while. You're a captain, as you said. So, just shine the light on what it really is to be leading Titan soccer team? Well, something really important about the Trinity soccer team is the family aspect that um, the whole team has. It's really hard sometimes to get the um, close dynamic with four different age groups, or five actually. We have a ton of eighth graders this year too. So being able to mesh all of those different grades and personalities and skill levels together is very special about the Trinity team. Yeah, and this year's team is is one of the youngest we've ever had. I mean, there's only three seniors and two juniors, so only only five upperclassmen out of a team of you know nineteen or twenty players. Um, so for you as a captain who's you know played all these rivalry games and you've been in state tournaments, you've played in the final four. How are you able to try and impart to those younger teammates, which it's all new for them? Um, like, how do you try and get them to understand what it means to play in these games and be part of the family atmosphere that you described? Well, we do different activities that bring us closer together. We're planning a sleepover right now. We do team bonding bus rides. Also just bringing like the positivity and bringing the excitement, especially to these rivalry games is a big deal. Also, I think the three captains really work hard to um, set an example, as I've already said. So that definitely helps. Great. So uh, earlier we mentioned that you've been on this team for a long time. So a little fun question. What's your favorite memory of being on the team been so far? My favorite memory, I think, hmm. I think it might have been this year's dinner. I think, especially with the different like dynamics, it really brought us closer together as a team. And that was really exciting, especially in the beginning of the season and then showing like this, we like aren't very far into the season, but we've done so well this, like leading up to this point. So I was excited. And then how about like an on the field game that, well, let me put it this way. Hopefully when you look back 10 years from now on your high school soccer career, hopefully the best game that you'll remember the most hasn't even happened yet because it'll maybe you know be a hopefully championship game later uh, this spring. But thus far, um, maybe remove this year from it, or I guess you can include this year if you want. But like, 
What's a game um, from either your ninth grade year or you didn't really get, sadly, a sophomore year, still not over that 2020 season. I think that would have been our best team ever. But um, or your junior year, like a game that you really stands out for you? We played, I think it was my junior, junior year, but we played St. Catharines at their fields and we beat St. Catharines actually, actually, and Brooke, Brooke Tilka was on the team. Yeah, so it was your freshman year. Yeah, okay, freshman year. Um, I was very wrong about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but freshman year, and they had man marked Brooke and I was like, so new to the team and I had just gotten all this space because they were man marking her and leaving me so having that responsibility was actually a challenge and ending up like I think I assisted a goal in that game so I, that was um, a big confidence boost for me and one of the best memories yeah I remember that one well that was the Janice uh, yes got the like clinching goal at the end that was sweet mm -hmm. you got any more um, I think I've gotten them all uh, all right, let's do a quick lightning round, Dakota. Just I'll probably limit it to four or five. Like, I haven't even thought of these questions yet. Just as they pop in my head, I'll ask you quick questions, quick answers, okay. all right? Uh, all right, uh, what's your um, favorite class? Math, definitely Calc. Who is your favorite, like, uh, soccer player in terms of, like, a famous male or female famous soccer player? Carly Lloyd, but don't think I'm a bandwagon. <laughs> um, favorite restaurant? Uh, Chipotle. Favorite meal? Uh, steak, rice, and broccoli. Dream city to live in? New York. And hype up song? Uh, feel this moment, Pitbull. All right, there you go. Feel this moment. <laughs> Listen to it. Uh, Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before before our next game, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play for myself. Feel this moment. All right, thanks Dakota. I uh, really appreciate you joining us. And again, um, I mentioned this in morning meeting earlier this week, but as far as I know, Dakota scoring that perfect hat trick against Veritas on Tuesday. I don't think we've ever had a girl do that before. Um, so that's really impressive by her, and she's doing an awesome job leading this young Titan soccer team. Come check them out. Thanks, to Dakota. Don't forget to hit the notifications bell. Go Hoos. <laughs> All right, now it's time for our Player of the Week segment. A lot of Titan sports have been uh, having a great spring so far, so a lot of good candidates to choose from. Sam, who would be a Player of the Week for you this week? My Player of the Week's got to be Roman Sincilio. He's just a force of nature out on the tennis courts, you know. If you haven't gotten to it, Tennis match ever for the Titans. You really need to come out. This kid's really special. You know, he capitalizes on all the McDoubles from his opponents. Um, you really just, Roman, you're just one hell of a player. That's all <laughs> I really got to say. Um, yeah, my player of the week, uh, I'm going to go with Dakota Bimbers, who we just had um, the interview with, scoring three goals at Veritas with um, the so called perfect hat trick, right, right foot, left foot header. And she's also just doing a great job of leading um, the team, a uh, very young team, but she's along with her fellow captains, Alec Placida and Olivia Whitbeck, um, they're all doing an awesome job leading that group. Uh, but also want to make sure to show, tell our viewers, um, remind our viewers that Connor Erlenbach put up 10 goals in a lacrosse game last week, which I think we won like 11 to 10, I believe was the final Tied score. The school record. Yeah, so. He had a buzzer beater um, in cross. Awesome job by Bach. We'll try and get him on the podcast soon. And then also, speaking of lacrosse on the girls' side, Catherine Pollard has been putting up huge numbers as the Titan uh, girls' lax squad had a couple big wins this week over um, VES and Cape Henry. So um, good job for those girls. Um, Griff, how about you? Well, you kind of took my player, Connor Erlebach, was going to be mine. Oh. But I mentioned, no, oh, hey, was, no, hey, listen, this is 10 goals. You can't can't go unspoken. That was, that was just crazy when I think – was 11 to 10 you said the final score was um buzzer beater you know you only you don't really hear that a lot um but definitely shout out to him but i also uh wanted to mention as the college basketball season uh wraps up we had two players um one in the nit and one in the march madness both make the championship uh you coached them both henry coleman and armando can you just uh speak on what it was like seeing those guys in those big stages it, it really was incredible like I felt a pride that I think like probably a parent feels when they see their kid do something great I mean obviously I'm not their parent yeah. 
But I mean, I've known both those kids since they were in middle school. I've coached each of them, like, I don't know, probably close to 100 games each. Um, won championships together, suffered tough losses together, battled together in the rebound room. And so to see Henry make it all the way to the NIT championship at Madison Square Garden and a one point loss, but he, he played incredibly yeah. well through that and, and was the leader on that Texas A&M team that really came on so strong at the end of the season. So I was really proud of Henry, and I think he's going to continue to just – that that program is, has, has incredibly positive momentum. And then for Mondo, I had a chance to see him in person for the Sweet 16 against UCLA and the Elite Eight against St. Peter's right from, like, second row behind the bench, uh, sat with his family, got got a chance to, to spend some time with him. And, um, and then for them to get all the way to the championship game, right. like, I just have never – felt so much pride and like I got so caught up in Carolina's run and you know I'm not a Carolina fan I'm a Mondo fan yeah I mean I'm a UVA fan like I've never really rooted for for UNC but this tournament I mean I was decked out in my Carolina blue sweatshirt I mean I, I was so into it and when they did fall just short in the championship game and of course Mondo got hurt and couldn't complete the game and I think they would have won if he had played but um I mean I was upset like I was really crushed um texted him after the game and, and heard back from him a little bit later and you know he's going through it right now but he was such a warrior such a battler um and just made all of richmond proud much less you know trinity um and one thing that did occur to me is there's about 360 division one men's basketball teams and each team has by ncaa rule has 13 scholarship players yeah. so if you, you figure 360 times 13 I don't know the exact math. That's about 4,000 men who play Division One basketball. Henry and Mondo were the last six teams playing were the final four, right? Uh, Kansas, Carolina, Duke, and, um, and Villanova. And then in the NIT, Texas a and Xavier. So there were six teams left as of last week. So you figure that's like less than 100 players. Yeah, Out of 4,000 players, there was only 78 players playing college basketball, and two of them uh, were Titans. That's so that, that just made me like so proud of this school, this program. Another thing that maybe not everyone who goes here now knows, especially about Mondo, because he's been gone for a few years, but um, those guys were both incredible community members. I mean, Henry was SGA president, just a leader throughout the school, um, and Armando was an incredible student. I taught him, I mean, he was great in my class. He got along with everyone. He was friends with all different groups of people. So they're not just great athletes, they're great students um, and even better people. And I, I'm really grateful that I got a chance to coach them and that I continue to maintain great relationships sure. with both of them. Yeah. And I just can't wait to see what the next chapter holds in store for each of those guys. So uh, my heart was just swelling with pride watching watching Henry and Mondo, you know, playing on the biggest stage and having a ton of success. Oh, it's sure. awesome. No, yeah, you gotta give a shout out to those two. And it's crazy because you know, me and DJ especially, you know, going uh, from JV to varsity, you kind of look up to those guys. Yeah. And to see them on TV, um, you know, I remember I went to the Titan camp with Mondo and Tink were my coaches. Yeah. You know right? I'm saying? So, like, seeing those guys that I, I grew up with um, on that stage is just a great, a great. Yeah, to it's got to be so cool for y'all. And, you know, I'm kind of on the opposite end, like, having known them since, um, since middle school. But another thing that I thought was really cool was um, like JJ Watt tweeted at Mondo that is crazy, um, yeah. when you know Coach K like 20 minutes after his final game like Coach K's career is over he found Mondo to like congratulate him and check on him because he'd hurt his ankle and like I don't know if you guys saw that footage but like in the hallway outside the locker room of the Superdome yeah. Coach K like seeks out Mondo and like pats him on the you know on the chest and is like great job you hope you're okay like good luck in the final yeah. I mean that's how big time he has become that like coach K who you know I'm sure was crushed like your career's over and yet he still took the time to go find Mondo and check on his health like that just shows you what a beast yeah uh, and legend he really is at this point yeah I'm sure we'll be seeing him in a professional jersey real soon I hope so I really do I hope so too I hope it's somewhere that's not too too far from here because yeah, I, yeah. I want to if it's in driving distance I'll be there a lot. Even if I got to fly, I, I can't wait to see him uh, first, at the next level. The first? For NBA, yeah. I don't think we've ever had an NBA player. And he still, in theory, could go back to Carolina. He has one more year eligibility. Yeah. But um, he, I think he's he'll... He's got to take it to the league. Yeah, I think he's going to. I think he's going I to. I think he should. Can't so, wait. Mondo, if you're watching, 
try to go Follow to me on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got to get Bondo on the podcast. So next time you're in town. That would be huge. That would be, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll work on that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I talk to him almost every day. So, you know, it, it, we could we could maybe make that happen. Let's make it happen. Um, all right. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, th- we are in the heart of the, the spring season. So many teams are, are rolling right now. So check out TESPN for more content. we got a bunch of live broadcasts coming up. And we'll be back next week to interview whoever the next uh, athlete that performs on the big stage is. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.